the Chief Economic Advisor, Arvind Subramaniam. Mr. Subramaniam, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Well, uh, the 1st of July is here. There's no looking back now. As Well, joining us now is the Chief Economic Advisor, Arvind Subramaniam. Mr. Subramaniam, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Well, uh, the 1st of July is here. There's no looking back now as we get ready for the implementation of the goods and services tax. Let me start by asking you about some of the concerns that have been raised, and specifically the concern being raised by the former finance minister, Mr. Peter Dambram, saying that this is going to be inflationary, at least in the short term. How would you respond to that? Uh, first of all, I, I'd like to begin by saying that uh, historic landmark achievement and a day for uh, rejoicing and celebration. Um, uh, so uh, th that's, I think, uh, we need to recognize that up front. Now, on the, uh, uh, you know, first the inflation uh, uh, challenge, I actually think that uh, even in the short run, uh, th that anxiety is overdone for two reasons. Mm -hmm. One, that the actual incidence of taxes after you take into account input tax credit and so on uh, is going to be actually substantially lower in the GST than what we have today. So incidence-wise, I expect that uh, uh, there should be a, a downward bias to prices. The second less recognized aspect of it, which is kind of a bit quirky, uh, I would say, is that in the run-up, uh, because people are disposing stocks, that's also having a, a kind of nice dampening effect on prices. Mm -hmm. So in the short run, for both of these reasons as well, I think uh, the, the, the bias should be towards downward prices rather than uh, upward uh, uh, biases. Now, it's true that there are two perceptional problems which I think will distort some of this uh, in the days ahead. First, you know, it's a kind of rule of behavioral theory that, you know, uh, the pain will be the focus of all the hype and attention, mm. whereas the large reduction will get forgotten. So we need to keep that in mind. The second very important thing to keep in mind from a perception point of view, which is something that all of us have to work towards, is the following. Today, before the GST, the taxpayer only sees the VAT. 
but embedded in his prices mm. is the excise tax. Mm. Going forward, he will see both uh, and he will think, oh my God, you've gone from 12 and a half VAT to 26, 18 percent uh, combined. Mm. But in fact, the actual embedded and incidence today was also 18 and tomorrow's 18. So there are these two, you know, C perceptional challenges that will we'll have to all of us have to work together uh, to overcome and and you know kind of face down as it were okay so that's as far as the inflation anxiety is concerned and you believe that it will in fact have a downward bias when it comes to inflation let me ask you about some of the other concerns that have been raised uh, a specific concern on what could happen to growth in the short term in the immediate term as we roll out the GST uh, the disruption that it's expected to cause for instance some concerns that uh, you know people are not stocking up uh, people are destocking ahead of the GST we've seen significant discounting which may have actually preponed sales how do you see it impacting growth in the immediate term? See, look, what is going to happen on growth in the short run uh, uh, is going to be determined by two things, right? One, uh, how quickly we can see through the GST challenges. You know, is it two months, three months, four months? You know, we still don't know. Uh, we know there will be challenges. We know there will be glitches, and we'll have to work through them. So, in the short run, that's certainly going to, uh, you know, increase uncertainty, and you know, may have some impact on investment and consumption and, and growth. But I think that the growth outlook, you know, in the short and medium term, will be determined by you know a lot more than just the GST. Uh, you know, there are lots of uh, things happening in the economy which we will describe in all their gory detail in the economic survey, uh, you know, later this month. Uh, uh, but, but, but the GST, uh, uh, you know, impact on growth will probably one relatively smaller element. Uh, so what's going to determine growth is what's happening on the broader macroeconomic front. Since you're talking about the gory details that you expect to unveil in the economic survey, so let me pick up on the macro uh, indicators and, and ask you about that. You know, uh, the previous economic survey uh, did spend a lot of time talking about the precarious position that state governments find themselves when it comes to their financial health, their fiscal health. And I would expect that the indicator suggests that that is going to get even more precarious given the fact that you're now dealing with significant farm loan waivers as well. Also, you have the rollout of the GST which could impact state finances also even though the center is going to compensate at least for the first five years but take me through the implications of not just the GST but other macro indicators when it comes to state finances well I, 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 th I think as I said you know the, the loan waiver I think is um, uh, at the agricultural loan waiver which you're referring to um, is, is, is actually much more complicated than it appears at first blush. Uh, you know, uh, the government, the central government has made it clear that uh, uh, if uh, state governments want to make some decisions, uh, they have to be responsible for the consequences of those decisions. So if they don't have a fiscal space, uh, they will have to meet it from other resources mm. or cut other expenditures. So, uh, you know, so in that sense, it's not obvious that, you know, state government finances will deteriorate or not. It's true that for some states that have this fiscal space, they may be able to, uh, you know, to spend and borrow more. Uh, but for other states, there's a kind of hard ceiling uh, fixed by uh, the, uh, the, the fiscal response legislation, uh, which, I, as you know, the center controls the borrowing. So, 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 you know, how much even the direction on the finances uh, is complicated, what the impact on aggregate demand and the economy is going to be is also actually more complicated than what anyone mm. thinks. And uh, I'm not going to uh, give away the secrets <laughs> at this stage or on that. Okay, you're not going to give away the secrets. We'll have to wait for the survey details. But uh, uh, if I could ask you on how this is likely to yeah. impact yeah. or weigh in on sentiment at the next uh, MPC meeting, because the minutes of the meeting did reveal that while Mr. Dolakia was in favor of a 50 basis point rate cut, the others wanted to wait and watch. And one of the reasons they also wanted to wait and watch was the rollout of the GST. How do you see this impacting uh, uh, or weighing on sentiment as far as the MPC? PC itself is concerned. Um, you know, again, I, I, I think that um, 
I, I don't want to get into what, uh, you know, the way the MPC will or will not respond. I, I think that there's some very serious analysis to be done on the macro economy, you know, what is happening to inflation, what is happening to growth, what the outlook is for both inflation and growth. Uh, and I think it's the combination of all these factors that will and should weigh into any decision about, you know, interest rates or whatever, which in any case, you know, it's, it, it's the prerogative of the MPC to determine. But I think what's important is what is our diagnosis of the economy on the inflation and growth front. And, and that, I think, is actually very complicated, uh, very rich, um, m lots of things going on. And I think that, um, as I said, you know, we're still working on this, refining the numbers, and, and you'll see a really comprehensive assessment in the survey, uh, which, of course, will also uh, have implications for how we should conduct macroeconomic policy going forward. <laughs>